Hello guys, welcome to Pilots Community and in today's video, I will be explaining you Jepson approach chart. So this is a Jepson approach chart for Bengaluru, Kempagoda International Airport. So the Jepson chart has been divided into various sections. The first section is the header, then we have the plan view, the profile view, the conversion table and the icon table and then finally the landing minimas. Now these different sections, they have so many items in them. I'll discuss each of the items in detail. So our first item is the city, the city in which the airport is and for which the approach chart is. That is Bengaluru and the country is India. Moving on to the next item, which is approach procedure identification. So this chart is for ILS runway 09 left. Moving on to the next item, which depicts the index number and dates all right so this is the index number which is 11-1 alpha and the, then we have a date on the left that is 3rd april 2020 there should have been a date on the right as well in this particular chart it has not been mentioned but the date on the right should be the most important date for us since this particular date would be the date from which the chart will be effective from so the date that has been mentioned on the chart is the date on which the chart was published that is 3rd April 2020. So the date which is more important to a pilot is the date from which he can start using this chart. All right. So I'll show you with an example later on a chart in which this date on the right is mentioned. All right. Talking about the index number 11-1 alpha reading from left to right our first digit is 1. Now this one signifies a particular airfield in the city Bengaluru. Now our particular airfield in the city Bengaluru uh, about which we are talking now currently is Kempagoda International Airport, right? Now Bengaluru can have more than one airfields and it does have. Uh, we have HAL Airport, we have uh, Yelahanka Airfield and we have Jakur Aerodrome. So this digit one has been assigned to Kempagoda International Airport. This one is arbitrary number and uh, there is no specific reason why one has been assigned to Kempagoda International Airport. Now moving on to the next digit which is again one. Now this uh, next digit is uh, is more interesting and it, and it is not an arbitrary chosen number. The reason why it is one is because this chart is for ILS. So the approach with the greatest precision and the lowest minimums will usually have a lower index number as compared to the approach with higher minimums. All right, this uh, second digit one for a VOR approach will be become three for a NDB approach. It will become six. Now in India, we don't do NDB approaches. Uh, it has been banned both to be used as a en route navigation aid or for approaches. All right, this second digit can be eight for GPS and so on. Talking about the last digit, which is one. Now, the same type of approach that is ILS approach can be there for this particular airfield, Kempagoda International Airport for different runways. Let's say for uh, ILS runway uh, 27 right, then uh, this digit for that particular runway will differ. So this 11-1 uh, is specially for runway 09 left, ILS approach runway 09 left. Now, uh, let's for example, let's say ILS approach runway Two seven right this digit could be 2 and it, it is not necessary that that runway has to be the opposite runway of the 09 left it could be a parallel runway or it could also be uh, an intersecting runway as well all right but that particular runway has to be of the same airfield that is Kempagoda International Airport so ILS approach different runway will lead to different digit in the last all right and this alpha uh, does not have a very special meaning it is because uh, this particular uh, approach chart is a final approach chart uh, these days we also have initial approach charts so the initial approach chart of this particular chart will be labeled as 11-1 moving on the next item is the airport identifier and the airport name so the identifier here is victor oscar bravo lima vobl which is a four letter identifier for this airport down this this is not an arbitrary letters that has been used 
each of the letter here has a specific meaning all right v stands for victoria territory and it will be the same for all the airfields in india then after v we have o now o is a specific fir identifier so this that is flight information region bangalore lies in chennai fir so the letter o is used now for different fir's have different letters all right so we have four fir's in india and one sub fir that is a e i and o a is mumbai fir i is delhi fir e is calcutta fir and o is chennai fir all right then the airport name kempagoda international airport moving on the fifth item is arrival communication frequencies in order of use guys this is very important these frequencies they have not been arbitrarily listed here they have been listed in the order of their use so whenever a pilot will tune a frequency when he will be going for an approach in bengaluru the first frequency that he will be tuning will be the atis frequency right 128.675 now this frequency will give him important information about the airfields like the runway in use the weather at the airfield the type of approach been enforced cloud ceiling and so many other informations which is important then after the tuning to the atis frequency the pilot will be handed over uh, from radar to approach all right so the approach frequencies have been listed here after tuning after tuning to the approach approach will hand him over to the tar will tune in this frequency 124.35 and once he lands on ground he will tune the ground frequencies now there is one interesting thing to note here guys you can notice for the approach and tar frequencies the city name has been mentioned whereas in case of the atis and ground no city name mentioned now why is that this is because this digital atis frequency and ground frequency they are different as compared to these digital atis frequency is only used for broadcast purposes right and the ground frequency is a secondary frequency these two frequencies are the primary frequencies all right so this is the reason why moving on to the next item we have uh, approach briefing information which consists of our navid right the localizer is our navid ilis india bravo alpha november is the identifier iban along with the frequency of the ilis that has to be tuned for the approach the final approach course the course at which the aircraft will be aligned to the runway when the pilot is making an approach to land 0902 followed by yeah followed by the ilis dme on the glide slope interception point right that, that will be at 9.4 ilis dme at the point iban and at this point the altitude should be 6000 feet then comes our lowest ilis decision altitude 3205 feet while lowest decision altitude because during the time of use of certain special procedures like uh, the approach ban policy the decision altitude could be higher as well right uh, when the pilot is making approach in low visibility conditions especially this uh, decision altitude could be higher and also for other reasons the next point we have airport elevation 3002 feet runway elevation 3002 feet strange because uh, many a times these two they are not the same but in in case of bengaluru it is the same so whenever there will be a difference it will be mentioned clearly on the chart then moving to the next item which is the missed approach instruction the instruction says clearly climb straight ahead when passing 3500 feet turn left onto radial 027 bravo india alpha cross 10 dme bravo india alpha at or below 7000 feet then climbing to flight level 85 join begra hold or as directed by the atc and the maximum speed that you can maintain is 210 knots these are the instructions for missed approach procedure in case the pilot is not able to land due to any reason coming to our next item it gives us altimeter setting will be in hectopascal in united states of america it is in inches in india we use hectopascal and also in most of the countries hectopascal is used runway elevation is 105 hectopascal transition level will be given by atc and transition altitude 
is 7000 feet. Notice DME is required for this approach. Okay. If we don't have DME, we cannot make this approach. Very important point. Coming to the next point, minimum safe altitude or rather I would like to call it minimum sector altitude because you can see guys this region has been divided into two sections one from uh, 205 to 360 and the other aircrafts that are coming from the east 205 and 360 alright so for the aircrafts that are coming from the west this uh, minimum sector altitude is 6000 feet and for the aircrafts that are coming from the east it is 5500 feet this is because of the highest obstacle guys in, maybe in the north we have a obstacle which is much higher as compared to the obstacle we have here in the in the west region right a correction in the east region so what is this msa this msa is basically the minimum altitude which a pilot should maintain in order to maintain safe clearance from the ground obstacles and what is the safe clearance now the safe clearance is 1000 feet for normal obstacles and it is 2000 feet for you know mountainous regions and this minimum safe altitude is always a reference to a point and uh, that point is usually the VOR or it could also be aerodrome reference point for certain airfields which do not have a VOR and this applies to a distance of 25 nautical miles from the reference navigation aid that is VOR or the aerodrome reference point. Now the next item next item lies in our next section of the chart which is plan view okay now th this particular item is often missed by pilots you see it is the scale of the chart now this chart has not been randomly drawn it has been drawn to the scale it means that this re this distance if you would open an actual paper Jepson chart this distance will be one inch all right it has not been mentioned on this particular chart but if you take a paper chart it will be mentioned there this distance is one inch and this one inch has been shown to be equal to five nautical miles all right so this is very important it and it helps us in knowing the dif distances to different points on this plan view right so we can have a good idea about the distances of different different points in the chart Moving to the next item, the 11th item here is our primary approach nav aid, which is the localizer, the ILS. Now the ILS comprises of localizer and glide path and they both are frequency tuned. So whenever we tune to the localizer, we are automatically tuned to the glide path as well. So the localizer frequency is 109.3 and the final approach course has also been mentioned 0902 along with the MOS code of the identifier. You can see the dots and the dashes. Once you listen to this while tuning to the frequency, you confirm that you have been tuned to the right localizer. Moving to the next item. This item shows the highest point, highest reference point within the plan view, right? The highest obstacle. The highest obstacle is 4000 feet, certain mountainous region because it has been written in uh, brown color. All right. So it's a mountainous region and the highest obstacle lies at 4000 feet, which is clear from the MSA guys. You see MSA in this north, uh, northwest of the chart is 6000 feet, 4000 plus 2000 gives us 6000. I told you earlier that the clearance has to be 2000 in case of mountainous region and 1000 in case of normal obstacles. All right. Moving on to the 13th item. This depicts the restricted area in the chart near the airfield right this restricted area is the area that lies below this blue line in the chart and it has it has also been you know uh, numbered properly and and each letter and the numbers they have a specific meaning here v stands for india victoria territory o as i told you earlier chennai fir r stands for restricted and 185 alpha is a series of this region moving on guys we have 14th item it gives us the platform altitude the altitude at which our aircraft should be when we are going for our ILS approach 
the lowest altitude before interception of our glide slope and localizer which is 6000 feet here then the next item is ground speed table all right now this particular region gives us a very good idea about the rate of descent that we should be maintaining with the ground speed for being accurate on this 3 degree glide path if you want to be on profile and let's say if your ground speed is 140 knots then your rate of descent should be 743 feet per minute now guys you don't have to remember this and if you are good at mental DR you can calculate the rough rate of descent in your mind as well uh, the formula for that for calculating the rough rate of descent is ground speed into 5 which is evident if you see for ground speed of 140 knots 140 into 5 gives us 700 which is very close to 743 feet per minute right so this is how it is done moving on to our next item it is the icons they give us information about the missed approach procedure and the lighting systems that is there for a particular runway that is for 09 or left we have the papi to the left of the runway you see the papi is written on the left side of this high intensity approach lighting systems HIALS right so there is only one papi and that is to the left some airfields they have two papis so the papi will be mentioned on the left side as well as on the right side and it is saying that refer to missed approach above which we have already discussed so moving on the next item we have is straight in landing runway 09 left decision altitude so this particular item tells us about the lowest decision altitude which we already discussed earlier that is 3205 feet and uh, it is also giving us information about the RVR in 18th item and this RVR is conditional guys you can see when we have full lighting systems available then our RVR turns out to be 550 quite lower but if the approach lighting system is out the RVR is now increased to 1200 meters 550 meters 1200 meters you can see the difference so coming to another Jepson chart as promised to show you the chart with effective date written on it here we have a Jepson chart of Delhi VOR DME runway 10 you can see here guys the effective date is mentioned here that is 20th of January 2005 2005 you can get it from here 7 January 2005 which is the date on which the chart was published all right so this is the date which uh, with which we are more concerned that is the effective date it is more important to the pilot and at the time of the briefing when you are doing the Jepson chart briefing you will confirm it with your crew member that he is having the same chart and this is how you will get to know the effective date on both of your charts will be 20th Jan and the index number has to be same all right this is all guys as far as discussing the different items in a Jepson approach chart tell me if you like this video hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel and let me know which video I should make the next time have a nice day guys bye bye